three months later and hey we're back with another episode of Tim Just Watched. I purposely waited this long to make another episode because I felt like more movies should be featured here. So before we start, I'm only featuring one show in this video. Everything else is just movies and I have a long ass list. So let's get started. I had no idea this movie existed until somebody brought it to my attention when I had company over. I didn't want to watch this movie, but I also didn't want to be a party pooper. So I watched it, and this shit sucked! Kevin Hart and Woody Harrelson's chemistry is so out of the blue, it doesn't feel real. The action scenes, if you want to call them that, are so lackluster and look like shit. And man, this movie just isn't funny. I'm tired of seeing Kevin Hart play the exact same character in every movie he stars in. Also, the twist at the end is insanely predictable. Even before the big reveal, Kevin Hart's character calls her out. So now we're just waiting for Woody Harrelson's character to find out. I'm referring to them as characters because I forgot their names. Anyways, nah, this movie's garbage. One of the worst of this year. I didn't want to see this movie mainly because of the memes surrounding it. However, I took my sister to see it, so there's that. The movie's fine. I took it a few times here and there. The story isn't anything to brag about. The memes are a bit annoying in some parts. And Gru was just there. I gotta stop rating these movies five stars on Letterboxd with no motion jit. I wouldn't get mad if it's on but I'm not going out of my way to watch it again. So far, this is easily one of my favorites of the year. Jordan Peele has suppressed me on multiple occasions, and nope doesn't disappoint. The acting is incredible, the movie consistently keeps me on the edge of my seat, and visually, I love the design for the alien. It's insanely unique. Now, one thing that rubbed people the wrong way was because of one thing, and it makes me upset. Jordan Peele's films usually have a message thrown in there for the audience to find. Now I'm not saying that you have to understand this message to enjoy this film. You can casually watch the film and still find enjoyment in this. What makes me upset is that people will write off this film just because they don't get it or it's just too confusing. For me, that's the fun part of films. I'm not going to catch everything this film has to say on my first viewing. If I'm into the movie, I'm going to watch it again until I analyze everything this film has to offer. Don't write off a film or call it trash because you don't get it. Hell, watch it another time, you might have a different experience. Unless you're a bitch, then ignore everything I just said. Said. Whether you watch this film casually or try your best to understand this flick, Nope is just one of those movies fam. Still to this day, one of my favorites of the year. Yeah, this was fine. I remember the high amount of praise this movie was getting, so I was curious. While I don't hate the movie, I just don't think it's anything special. The plot isn't anything new, and the humor is hit and miss. I will say I'm a fan of the voice talent. I think Dwayne Johnson was a good choice for Crypto. And surprisingly, Kevin Hart did a great job as Ace. Ace's backstory is pretty sad, even though it's just another Jesse backstory ripoff. Just like the Minions, I wouldn't care if it's on, but I'm not in a rush to watch it again. I wanted to see this movie in theaters, but I couldn't because I was busy and never got a chance to see it. Months later, I got to watch it on HBO Max and I loved every second of it. The animation is gorgeous, the musical numbers are great, however I wish there was more. The comedy is just classic Bob's Burgers, and I just couldn't stop laughing. I love the murder mystery in this film too. I thought they were going to find a lame way to find the murderer, but this movie does a great job without making the reveal extremely obvious. The Bob Sorgan movie is a wholesome film. Definitely worth checking out if you haven't seen it. Hey, guess who's back in the Ghibli marathon? Honestly, I just kept procrastinating, so I decided on a rainy night to sit back and watch My Neighbor Totoro. Wasn't expecting much from this movie, but after watching it, this is easily my new favorite comfort movie. This film is just sweet. The characters are likable, the jokes hit, and the emotion hits hard. I always praise the animation from Ghibli films, but the animation here is insanely creative. From the things Totoro can do, to the smaller scenes where the cinematography does the storytelling, I absolutely love this movie. I can say that this is my third favorite Ghibli film. Okay, I saw the trailer for this movie and I thought it was a bit silly, but I wanted to get out the house, so me and my friend went to go see it. Beast is exactly what I thought it was going to be. This film is so dumb, but I had fun with it. It was a bit annoying not to see these characters use their common sense in some of these situations, but honestly, this is just a film that you turn your brain off and just consume. I think the main reason I had so much fun with this movie was because me and my friend had an empty theater and he was high as fuck, and we were laughing our asses off to this. It just Elba fighting the lion is probably the funniest shit I've ever seen. If you're looking for a good time waster, go watch Beast. Down, water, fresh out the clouds, clown. I saw the trailer and I automatically knew I had to see this one. Pearl is the prequel to the movie X, the movie that came out a few months before this film. I saw this movie by myself, and let me just say that you guys should see movies by yourself more often. You wouldn't have to worry about someone you know sitting next to you cracking stupid ass jokes and asking questions that don't need to be fucking answered. I mean, what? Pearl is also one of my favorites of the year. Is it flawless? Not at all. 
but I love every second Mia Goth was on screen. Seriously, I hope she gets nominated for something. There's this is one scene where Pearl is pretty much venting for 7 minutes, and this scene is where I said Mia Goth is an amazing actress. This film is set up like an old school slasher flick, and Ty West does a good job pulling this off without making it come across as corny. One scene that throws me off every time I watch this movie is the scene with Pearl and the Scarecrow. I don't care about them dancing, but what happens afterwards is insane. Overall, Pearl Slaps is a movie I would recommend over and over again. Back on my studio Ghibli shit. Next up, we have Kiki's Delivery Service. This is one of the most wholesome movies I've seen from Studio Ghibli so far. I love the visuals, the score, and Kiki is such a sweet character. Just trying to get by. I love the fact that the plot for this movie isn't straightforward. Kiki meets so many people who care for her while she's doing her delivery service. This movie is us watching Kiki experience the real world for the first time. And I love to see it. Nothing else to say, but I still love Kiki's Delivery Service. It's a film that I just know I'm going to watch a dozen more times in the future. I didn't know what to expect from this one, so I went into the movie blind and surprisingly I had a good time. It's a love story between our two main characters, Alana and Cooper. Their relationship is both toxic and sweet at the same time. I say this because they fuck around with other people just to get back at one another, however, they always find themselves back with each other. This movie is well shot, well acted, and all around wholesome film. Check it out when you can. A few weeks after watching Pearl, I sat down and watched X. Honestly, I thought X was just an alright film. The first act isn't my cup of tea. And yeah, I know this movie is about a group of people filming pornos, but that's the least interesting part of this film. When the second act kicks in, I started to enjoy this movie a bit more. I mean, yeah, you do have to get past this one scene of Pearl and her husband doing the <laughs> that shit. <laughs> Fam, not gonna lie, this shit is gross. <laughs> Overall, X is a fine enough movie. Pearl is a better film at the end of the day, but I'm interested to see what else this film series has to offer. It's the news. Oh shit, we got the director of The Lighthouse on this one. I didn't get to see this one in theaters, so I bought it on Blu-ray, and once again, I have another favorite of the year. For those who know nothing about this movie, think of it as a Lion King, but more violent and with buff people killing each other. I had a lot of fun watching this movie. I know you're not supposed to cheer for revenge stories, but this was satisfying to watch. I don't want to get too deep into the story, just in case someone else wants to see it, so I'll just say this. The Northman is a good movie, well acted, shot beautifully, and a satisfying movie to watch once you make it to the second act. Check this one out, y'all. Man, when I watched the trailer for this movie, I was interested. The cinematography is what caught my attention, and I patiently waited for its release. I didn't even care about the runtime, I still wanted to see it. Anyways, after giving it a watch, I can proudly say that this is easily one of the worst movies I've seen this year, I'm not even fucking joking. Where do I even start? Blonde is such a disgusting movie. A film that goes over the dangers of exploitation while also exploiting Marilyn Monroe's tragedy to tell the story. Not only that, a lot of what this film does is not even close to what happened to Monroe in real life. One day while scrolling through Instagram, I noticed that this movie somehow managed to earn an NC-17 rating. So I did some research and I found out that this movie had a scene in it. After reading that, I was hoping there was a reason to show off this graphic imagery, but no. This film is just constant abuse targeted at Marilyn Monroe. And usually I praise a movie for making me feel uncomfortable if there's a justifiable reason for it. This movie has no reason for it. While I didn't grow tired of this film, I was ready to turn it off on multiple occasions. If the first 20 minutes of the movie didn't turn you off, this scene where Marilyn Monroe's unborn child shames her for having an abortion will without a doubt make you turn this shit off. I will say the only two things I liked from this movie is the cinematography and the acting, but that's about it. I'd never been this let down by a film before, but Blonde is fucking awful. Just because you can make something uncomfortable and thought provoking doesn't mean you have a gem. If you like this movie, that is perfectly fine. But for me, Blonde is easily one of the worst movies I've seen this year. Okay, my rant is over, so let's talk about an actual good film. Y'all yeah, remember that one picture of Christian Bell looking skinny for a role? This is that movie. The Machinist is a movie that will keep you guessing from beginning to end. The more you watch it, you start to pick up on the subtle detail this movie is showing off. Once the big reveal happens, you look back to those moments and say, why didn't I pick up on these moments before? Christian Bell does an amazing job and this movie has a nice payoff. The Machinist is a good film. I don't want to go too deep into this because of spoilers, but I promise you'll enjoy yourself. <laughs> yeah, this one's gonna be short. It's The Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. This is such a fun watch. The jokes hit, the characters are fun, and Linus was the highlight. Linus and Sally wanted to see the Great Pumpkin is both sweet and hilarious. Also, the ending where Lucy brings Linus back home is wholesome to watch. Not much to say, this is a great special. Can't wait to watch the others. I don't dig the plot for this movie whatsoever. The blend of serious mob shit and comedy doesn't mix well. 
However, I can't deny the fact that this movie is hilarious. You have the kings of comedy all in one film. While not every joke lands, the majority of them hit hard. Harlan Nights is a fun watch. The story isn't anything special, but these jokes and the characters carry this movie. Your is a really great beat. The GOAT Henry Selleck returns to direct another stop motion flick, Window and Wall, also featuring the help of Jordan Peele as producer. I love how you can just look at Window and Wall's design and you can immediately tell who voices them. One thing I love for this movie is the character designs. Not every character looks the same. You can easily tell them apart from each other. And I'm happy this movie had a PG-13 rating. It's cool to see how much they were able to get away with in this film. Window of Wall is fun. Cat is a character you can quickly sympathize with because this movie has an intense opening. I don't think Window of Wall is better than Henry Selleck's previous works. I do, however, think that Window of Wall is a movie I'll watch again during the month of October. Take this one out. I guess you wonder where I've been. Alright, so last video I told you I was finishing up the second season of The Owl House. Fast forward to now, I finished the second season, and I watched the first episode of the third season. For my quick thoughts of the second season as a whole, I enjoyed this season a lot more than the first. I love how the second season ends off. So much happens in the last few minutes, and it plays out so quickly. Last video, I didn't warn y'all about spoilers, so here's me warning you right now. <laughs> the final episode ends off with Luz, Gus, Hunter, Willow, and Amity being sent back to the real world, with season 3 picking up right where we left off. First episode of season 3 is titled Thanks to Them, a fun and action packed hour long episode that has me hyped to check out the next two episodes. They were going crazy on their animation budget with this scene. Overall, it sucks to see the Owl House coming to an end with not that many episodes for its last season, but I'm happy I tuned in. I still think that the Owl House is indeed a banger. Easily the corniest movie I've seen this year. The VFX is a bit rough, and the humor is hella hit and miss. This movie inherits the worst parts of the MCU. That being said though, <laughs> I mean I had a little fun fam. It ain't no movie of the year or anything, but hey, it's fun to watch a movie that's so silly that you can't help but laugh and have a good time with it. Sucks to see that this movie underperformed though. I recommend Black Adam if you're looking for something to have on, but that's about it. Watch it if you want, can't guarantee you'll love it, but if you do, congrats. Speaking of corny movies, Venom Let There Be Carnage was a movie I didn't like all that much when I first watched it. However, a few weeks later, I watched it again out of curiosity and I kinda dig it now. I love Carnage in this movie, the final battle is fun, and Eddie and Venom's relationship is kinda funny. It been annoying at times, but I still like it. I think what threw me off on my first watch were the jokes. Sadly, I still think that some of these jokes don't land. I'm happy I watched this again though. Let There Be Carnage is a fun film to throw on when you're in the mood. It wouldn't be my first choice, but I think there's fun to be had. Lastly, we have the latest film in the MCU, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. When this movie gets it right, it's some of the best shit the MCU has done in a long time. And at its worst, it's just fine. I think some of these jokes kill the vibe at times, and the action scenes aren't all that impressive. Except for the final fight with Shuri and Namor. Ignoring all that, this movie hits hard at times. I swear if Angela Bassett doesn't get nominated for Best Supporting Actress, I'm gonna scream fam. Everyone in this movie was giving it their all. Visually, this is one of the best Mukin MCU films of the year, and the score, while not as good as the first, is still impressive. This is how you do a send out to Chad with Bozeman, right? No, I didn't cry, but man, I came close to it near the end of the film. Wakanda Forever is a sweet movie, and I can't wait to watch it again. Bozeman.